All right, for today's video, we will be learning about stoichiometry, which helps us realize why we had to balance equations um, in the first place and what we do with those numbers. So in stoichiometry, it's important, and actually, I mean, there's many places in science where it's important to understand something that's called the law of conservation of mass. Uh, so basically just making sure you really understand that matter can't be created or destroyed in these processes. All we're doing is rearranging or changing forms. So take for example the reaction we were performing in lab with the rockets uh, where we looked at hydrogen plus oxygen. So with this balanced reaction which we've balanced before you know in other units we can think of this as saying well we have when we were balancing we would say we have four hydrogen atoms plus two oxygen atoms to make four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms if we were drawing out circles. So we can see that mass is conserved because we have the same number of hydrogen atoms on both sides, the same number of oxygen atoms on both sides, and so on. We can also look at this in terms of what it means that two hydrogen molecules plus one oxygen molecules makes two water molecules. And here, when you state it this way, you might think, well, doesn't that show that mass isn't concerned, conserved? Because I started with 2 plus 1, so I started with 3 molecules over on the left side, and I only made 2 molecules on the right side. So molecules is not something that's conserved. The mass inside them, the number of atoms, which we already demonstrated, is. So instead of talking about how many molecules we have, because we're never going to actually sit and count out um, molecules, we can talk about how many moles would be involved in the reaction. So we can talk about how we'd have two moles of hydrogen would need one mole of oxygen and would make two moles of water. So here we're just clumping a, a large number of molecules together and talking about moles. However, we have no way in the lab of measuring out moles. We have to measure out grams. So this reaction would tell us that four grams of hydrogen uh, plus 32 grams of water would make, and I just realized there's a typo here, um, so that's not supposed to say um, 18 because uh, it's 2 moles of water. So this should be 36. Apologize for that. So then we can see that mass is conserved because we start with 4 and 32. So we start with 36 grams over here. And we end with 36 grams on the other side as well. Okay. And again, when we're looking at this, we might say, well, that doesn't relate to the original reaction because we it said two hydrogens, but here we have four, and here we have one, and here we have 32. So we start with a two to one ratio, and we ended up with a four to 32. But that's because hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules don't weigh the same. So that's where why we can't work in grams is because grams doesn't direct or grams isn't exactly what the reaction says. We have to work in moles because the number in moles. Uh, th those ratios work exactly like the ratios uh, in the balanced reaction. So just seeing a visualization of stoichiometry. So again, this goes back to uh, you know what we've done before in the past with, with drawing circles to illustrate a reaction. So what I can do is I can show you that if we have um, you know talk about well, what is the mass of an aluminum? It's 27 atomic mass units, or a mole of aluminum atoms would be 27 grams. And do the same thing, put in the molar masses of oxygen and um, iron here. So again, the reaction says we're gonna take two moles of aluminum, one mole of iron oxide, make two moles of iron and one mole of aluminum oxide. And because each mole is 27 grams, I in total take 54 grams of aluminum add 160 grams of iron oxide to it and make 112 grams of iron and 102 grams of aluminum oxide. So you can see in either way I start with 214 grams of material and I end with 214 grams of material. Okay. Now every time we do a problem in stoichiometry we don't want to have to um, draw a picture every time. Okay. So what we do is we draw a, ro a road map of What's one lab quantity? What's one thing we can measure in lab? And how can we use that and the reaction to find a quantity of something that we don't know? Okay, so here's the general roadmap that we're always going to be using as we go through this. 
The mole conversions is something we've talked about before in the mole unit. The mole ratios from reaction is something that we haven't gotten into yet. So, and I think, did something happen here? Oh, here we go. So just seeing what, uh, what is meant by those mole ratios. So if I have this reaction like up here, okay, the mole ratio, so I, this says two butane molecules plus 13 oxygen molecules makes eight carbon dioxides and 10 waters. So if I want to look at what would a, the mole ratio be if I wanted to go from butane to water? Well, I want to get into water, so water goes up on top. And so I look at the reaction, and water has a 10 in front of it. So it's 10 water molecules for every, and I go up to the butane, it has a 2 in front of it. So it's 10 water molecules for every 2 butane molecules. And yes, you could reduce that down to 5 over 1. Um, would be fine also because that's really what you're doing. However, we, I like to keep it 10 to 2 just so I can remind myself that those 10 and 2 came from the reaction and that's where I'm getting with it. Okay, so the rest of these I'd like you to do, um, figure those out. Um, again, just seeing how to do this uh, reaction thing and hold on a minute. I realize my screen got a little small for... Um, what I'm doing here. So let's see if I can get that back focused. Got to make it a little narrower. Close enough. So 320 grams of iron oxide is going to be reacted according to the following reaction. And I want to know how many grams of iron can be made from this. So again, here's the reaction I'm working with. So I'm going to put the question on the roadmap. So I'm going to say I have 320 grams of iron oxide to start with. To get to moles of iron oxide, I'm going to have to divide by the molar weight of iron oxide. To go from moles of iron oxide to moles of iron, I'm going to have to use the ratio of 2 iron to 1 iron oxide, like what's on the equation here. And then to get from moles of iron to the mass iron, now I'm going to have to multiply by the molecular weight of iron. So in practice on your calculator, it's going to look like this. Okay, and so hopefully you can try those out and find that, sure enough, you'll end up with that you could get 224 grams of iron out of this. Okay. So again, looking at uh, doing mole conversions, um, here's a problem using uh, the reaction that we talked about previously where you're supposed to practice uh, coming up with mole ratios. If I want to use the mole ratios to answer all the following, okay, so what it tells me, it asks me is how many moles of water could be made if I burn four moles of butane? So I look at this and to go between the two of them, I use the fact that again, that there were 10 waters for every two butanes. So I would take the four moles I start with and multiply by 10 waters over two butanes. And that is, again, multiplying by 5 or taking 4 times 10, which is 40, and dividing by 2. Either way, you'll get 20 moles of water. Again, that's using the ratio set up by the reaction. Okay, so if I want to do this. See, I thought I had this set up. Okay, so there's one for you to practice. Oh, no, it was it? I took a trickier one. Okay. So now those was that was going from moles to moles in that last example that we worked out together. Here's one where it asked me how many grams of water can be made out of 146 grams of HCl. So I'm going to draw the roadmap, start with my general roadmap, and I'm going to start filling it in. So first looking at mole conversions, things we've already learned. To go from the quantity of A, so that's the 146 grams of um, HCl that I started with, I'm going to divide, I'm going to take one mole is the same as 36.5 grams. So I'm going to end up dividing 146 grams by 36.5 and then to go and I'm going to end up getting four okay, uh, moles there. 
hard to write with the trackpad. Give you a lot of time to think. Then if I want to go from moles of HCl to moles of water, I look at the reaction. According to the reaction, I need two waters for every two HCLs. Okay, so I'm going to take four. I'm going to multiply by two over two. So that's still going to give me four moles. It's just now I have four. I'm talking about my four moles of water instead of four moles of HCl. And then finally, I'm going to take my four moles. I'm going to multiply it by the fact that water is 18 grams per mole. So I'm going to take four times 18. And I'm going to find that I, that would be 72 grams of water. Okay. So I started with 146 grams of HCl and I ended with 72 grams of water by working through that roadmap. Okay. So again, um, now. A lot of times in lab, we don't just say, well, if I am given so much of one thing, how can I make of another? We're usually mixing two things together. And so that adds a new challenge in, which is, is called doing a limiting reactant problem. So if I start with the fact that I have five moles of hydrogen and I want to react with three moles of oxygen, okay? What you need to do is you need to find out, well, how much water could you make based on the hydrogen? Based on the hydrogen, I start with my five moles of hydrogen, the problem told me I have, and multiply by the ratio of two waters for every two hydrogens. So five moles of hydrogen is enough to make five moles of water. With oxygen, it told me I had three moles, and I multiply that by the ratio of two waters for every one oxygen. So I have enough oxygen to make six moles of water. The thing is, though, is once I've made five moles of water, I will run out of hydrogen. So I can't make six moles of water. So that means I'm only going to be able to make five moles of water, and that's it. Because again, that's all. Um, five moles is all I have hydrogen for. So here's one for you to practice with using the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen. Kind of go through the same thing. Use the water one as your example. Okay, and here's one where we're looking at not doing a limiting reactant problem in moles, but more realistic to a lab situation where we're looking in grams. Okay, So we're going to start off with looking at, from calcium chloride, we need to start with the fact that we're given 220 grams of calcium chloride. We need to know how many moles of calcium chloride is that and how many moles of calcium hydroxide could be made from that. Okay, From sodium hydroxide, same thing, we start with 120 grams. Find out how many moles of calcium chloride would that make? Or, whoops, that's supposed to say moles of sodium hydroxide, and then go from there to moles of um, calcium hydroxide. So, again, that's not supposed to be calcium chloride, that's supposed to be sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's it for um, beginning stoichiometry. We'll work some of these example problems uh, together when you're in class tomorrow.